Games as popular as StarCraft tend to attract some pretty hardcore fans, so if you're a casual player who's not sure what to expect from the upcoming sequel, you can rest assured that Blizzard is working on a game that will appeal to players of all skill levels. If you haven't been following every last bit of StarCraft II news, it helps to have a pretty good idea of what Blizzard's done with the game's three different races. The whole game feels pretty familiar, but there are plenty of alterations and enhancements that are going to force everyone, even the experts, into rethinking their age-old strategies from the first game. We'll start with the Zerg. Everything you read about the Zerg in StarCraft II should come with one pretty important caveat, and that's the fact that they're the race that Blizzard is tweaking the most at this point. They're the last race to be developed, and Blizzard still thinks they're a little too weak, so expect to see plenty of balancing with these guys. But still, the Zerg are hardly pushovers. One new unit to help defend against the onslaught of other races is the Banaling, which morphs from the Zergling. These are one of the many examples of Blizzard putting specific counters into the game, as the Banaling are great against low-level rushes of Protoss Zealots and Terran Marines. You can also exploit the newly revamped Queen unit, which is now capable of an ability that lets your hatchery spawn four extra larvae. Use the ability to amass a huge army, throw in some roach units to absorb damage, and you've got yourself a pretty impressive force. Now for the Protoss. This race features a warp-in technology, which is an ability that makes your run-of-the-mill gateways much more interesting. Rather than spawning new units right in front of the gateway or at a nearby rally point, you can elect to warp any units that gateway has created to a far-off corner of the map, so long as you've got a pylon built there already. Basically, warp-in allows you to use a gateway to create troops in one of your bases and quickly shoot them over to any expansion that you've made down the line. One of the other new upgrades to the Protoss race is the ability to build an obelisk at your base. The Protoss have always been more about taking the time to make powerful, durable units rather than quickly putting together a flood of dispensable grunts. With the obelisk, though, you can cast a proton charge spell on your probes to have them gather crystals at a much faster rate. Pulling in more crystals means you can pump out more zealots to overwhelm your zerg enemy with a little taste of their own medicine. And finally, there's the Terran race. Like the other races in the game, the Terran have also been given quite a few new tricks to boost their production and effectiveness. You can add a modular reactor upgrade to your barracks to create two infantry units at once to really pump out the marines, medevacs, and vikings. You can also upgrade your command center to an orbital command, allowing you to bring in mule units. These little guys are temporary harvesters that let you harvest far more minerals over a short period of time. There are a few new features to help improve your game that don't even come into play until the match is over. One is a post-match stat screen that gives you a ton of information related to you and your opponent's performance over the course of the game. A few examples are a graph of your army size over time in relation to your opponents, your average unspent resources, and an itemized list of everything you built at precisely what time during the match. If you take the time to study this information, you should help isolate problem areas in your production and upgrading strategies. Another way of doing this is by looking at the post-game video, which you can save and share after each match. If you want to rewatch specific parts of the video, you can even rewind and fast-forward to your heart's content, which is fairly novel in RTS replays. And that does it for our StarCraft II primer. Stay tuned for more coverage in the very near future, including a long-awaited look at the single-player campaign. <laughs>